Romans chapter 7. Examples from marriage. Surely you will grasp what I am about to tell you, my siblings and friends. For you are quite learned regarding the law. The law reigns over men only while they are alive in the world. For the lady who has a spouse is bound by the law to her spouse while he is alive. But if the spouse dies, then she is free from the law of her spouse. Therefore, if while her spouse is alive, she marries again, she will be known as an adulteress. Now, if her original spouse dies, she is liberated from that rule. And so, she cannot be called an adulteress if she marries again. And so, my siblings and friends, you have likewise become dead to the law through the flesh of Jesus Christ, that you may be married forever to him who was raised from the dead back to life, that we might be productive in the service of the Lord God. For when we lived subject to the body, the ungodly craving and insatiable hankering aroused by the law were at work in our flesh. And all our actions, all our deeds were completely base, only resulting in death. But now we have been liberated from the law because we expire to what once held us captives so that we might serve in the new path of the Spirit and not in the old path of an inscribed law. And now, what shall we say? Is the law an error? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. For I would never have been aware of errors without the law. Surely, I would never have been aware of covetousness if the law had not declared, do not covet. But by means of the rule just mentioned, error had an excellent opportunity to produce in me all sorts of depraved longing and hankering. For without the law, error was expired. I was full of life at a time without the law. But then came the commandment. Error revived and I expired. And the commandment which was intended to bring life, I observed, brought death. Error found an excellent opportunity and by means of the commandment it beguiled me and took my life. And so the law is sacred and the commandment is sacred just and excellent. Has that which is excellent now become dead to me? Absolutely not. It was error that did it. By employing that which is excellent, error brought death to me, so that its actual nature as error will be made known. Therefore, by means of the commandment, error is demonstrated clearly to be exceedingly erroneous. For we are aware that the law is spiritual, but I am not spiritual, only sold under error. I do not grasp the things I do. For I do not do the things I would love to do, but on the contrary, I do the things I hate to do. And since the things I do are the very things I do not want to do, this demonstrates clearly that I agree with the law that it is good. So, it is not really I who do these things, but error that dwells within me. I'm aware that nothing good dwells in me, that, that is, in my physical body, for although I long to do good, I'm just not able to achieve it. For the good things I wish to do, I just never do. But the evil things I wish not to do, that I do always. If I do the things I do not wish to do, 
This implies that I am no longer the person who does it, but the error residing within me. I observe then a rule. Whenever I wish to do something good, evil is the only option present. My inner self takes great pleasure in the law of the Lord God. But I observe a different law in my flesh. Striving against the law, my mind approves of. It makes me a captive to the law of error, which is in my flesh. What a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this flesh that is already doomed? I give thanks to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, with the mind, I am completely devoted to the law of the Lord God, but with the physical body, the law of error. 